Well, can you answer that same question that I asked Dan about why the experience seems to be so powerful for both sides here? Well, it's for the campers. They're experiencing um, an unconditional attention from an adult who uh, who they can look up to, um, who respects them, who doesn't, um, when their behavior turns um, and, and is not acceptable, intervenes in a way that is is uh, is effective and not judgmental. Um, that you know you keep it's it's going to be very it's going to be impossible for that kid to act out in a way that drives that volunteer away. So for the camper, it's this this unconditional experience that is uh, that sometimes you know they say we don't we aren't loved unconditionally after our first year of life, um, but the idea is is to really is to really sort of absorb um, those behaviors and work work with uh, with the uh, camper on alternative behaviors for the volunteers to give of yourself. I think in that way is um, is very powerful. It's very uh, just watching. You know, I I have not experienced a week at camp. What I did is I I've only been you know, at the association for a year. So what I did is I watched Dan train the volunteers on their first day. And then I came on Wednesday and I saw th- th- this transformation had taken place where, the, you know, the, the, everybody's busy, very busy all the time. And these relationships, you can see the relationships growing. And by the end, um, it's just the tears. It's very powerful. You're already filled for this year, right? With campers. Right. Yes. Okay. How do how do people sign up, or how do people, if they have a child who's seven or eight or whatever, how do, how do they get involved so that they can participate, say, next year? Sure. Well, for both the uh, the campers and the volunteers, um, we have applications through our website, which is campdaybreak.com. Uh, our application deadline for both the staff, I'm sorry, for both the volunteers and the campers is always April 1st, April Fool's Day. Um, that's not a coincidence. Um, it's a fun day. Um, you know, and, and so the, the applications are always available online um, through the website. And uh, we're always looking for good volu- good people to be volunteers. Uh, we're always looking for families who, who could use the experience. Um, and it's always available to mm-hmm. them. Um, you know, uh, uh, Floyd's predecessor always used to say, uh, he coined the phrase, planning for the next year's camp starts the next day of camp after the camp session ends. And um, it's really true. Um, you know, once we wrap up the camp session of that current year, we're moving on to the next year. And so applications for the coming year's session is always available after the session ends. Mm-hmm. Um, they're always on the website. Mm-hmm. So folks can just go uh, fill out an application. For the campers, we just ask that um, they can be referred by family members, um, people in the school system, people in mental health, uh, mental health providers. Uh, we just ask that the families, schools, mental health systems collaborate on the application so that there are many voices being heard uh, and we get a, a complete picture of who the kid is before they come. How do you donate? We have a button on our website okay. um, at campdaybreak.com uh, that brings you to our PayPal account. Um, and it's very easy to go on. Just click the button. It gives It's very user-friendly. As well, there's one on uh, VAMH. AR.org. Um, that is a great way to donate. But also, you can send checks to the office uh, if that's easier. Stop by the office. Um, we're at 100 State Street uh, in Montpelier. Okay. Um, suite 352. In the, capital, in the Capitol Plaza. In the Capitol Plaza, yes. Okay. At th- uh, suite 352. Um, yeah, come on by. Uh, I always love talking to people about camp and about the experience. Um, it was something that, for me, changed my life. Significantly, um, and I and I owe the program and the experience a lot, uh, and love to talk about people to people about what the experience could be for them or some for someone they know. Well, your enthusiasm is really it's uh, is something I honor. Let me have you put those headphones on. Sure. Let me take a phone call. We head to uh, Middlebury. Bill, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Mark. Um, I didn't necessarily have a question for you. I just um, have an experience. My uh, son um, attended Kent Daybreak a couple years ago, and uh, um, one of the things we took away from it was the bond that he created um, with his um, buddy um, during that week, um, and, and how wonderful the, the program was at the end of the week when they were, we were doing the, 
the songs and, and the last show of the, of the, the, the camp, um, my son, while we're engaged, his buddy a, a hug. It was just truly emotional um, and just a wonderful affirmation um, for him. Um, but the other the other part that um, maybe a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of the parents that have kids that have um, some of these difficulties um, have a huge huge job. Um, um, from 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 my my son who was adopted through foster care, um, it's a full time job taking care of him and. Um, my wife and I very, very seldom get a break. And Good honestly, point. having that week um, for us to kind of recharge our batteries was just, you know, just an incredible part of that week as well. What a great point. That's, you know, I, I can imagine. So what was your son's challenge? Um, my son has multiple challenges, unfortunately. Um, um, he, he had a very, very rough start to life um, as, a, as, a, as a baby. Um, and he came to live with us when he was five. And um, to this day, we have um, a daily challenge that includes, unfortunately, traumas um, and diagnoses that are multiple, uh, PTSD, early uh, onset trauma, um, reactivity, uh, abandonment issues, um, just a, a, a myriad of, of things. And, you know, the people at Camp Daybreak were just incredible with their patience with him um, and, and, and how they supported him during that week. Well, God bless you for doing that. It's really, you know... I I'm sure it's very rewarding to you, but it is, I'm sure, a challenge. You know, that you're really taking on, uh, you're taking on uh, uh, God's work, as they say. Well, you know, you can't walk away from a little child. I mean, that's the, the you know, the, the, the chances for him um, are, you know, are, are tough enough that if he doesn't have the support that he needs from some caring adults, and there's lots of them out there, not not just myself, but there's tons and tons of parents who have adopted kids through foster care. And, you know, they're, they're in the same place we are. We just want to see these kids become as successful as they can. Thank you very much for calling. I appreciate it very Thank much. You. Thanks, Bill. You know, it, it raises an interesting point. It's actually a question I had before Bill called. We're, you know, my, my daughter goes to a camp, and they really kind of emphasize keeping the parents away. Mm-hmm. You know, they make it about as difficult as possible. You know, if, you want to, if your kid wants to email you or something, they charge you an arm right. or a leg, which I, I, is great. I mean, it's great to have your kid go off and have their own experience and not, not have be on their phone or something calling. So how do, how are parents dealt with at Camp Daybreak? Do you try to keep them away as much as possible? Um, yes and no. That's, that's a good question. Um, I, for me, for the kids, I think that the important piece is that there is some space and for the parents as well. So there is some space um, from the family dynamic uh, that can sometimes not be overly positive. Um, But at the same time, you know, I, I, as a parent myself, understand sending your kid away for a week and wanting to know what's going on, what's happening, you know, how are they doing? (laughs) Um, And, and I completely support uh, parents calling and asking those questions um, to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would, and I always love and encourage folks to have conversations about how their kids are doing. Uh, you know, it's it's always nice to get a phone call from a parent who's worried about their kid because uh, it means they care. Um, we have a we have a system. We don't have email at camp because we're up in the mountains. Uh, email is not really accessible to us. Okay. Um, but we encourage kids to write letters home. Um, right. You know, people don't write letters anymore. I know. Um, and uh, and uh, you know, I think there's a lot of value to putting a, a, a pen to a piece of paper and writing a note to a loved one. Um, you know, saying just hi, how are you, or asking how the dog is. You know, or like you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we encourage kids to do that, and we also encourage parents to send you know care packages or uh, letters or whatever to their yeah. kids while they're at camp. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's great. I mean, it sounds like just every other kind of camp experience. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, you must have been listening to the show the other day, and we were bemoaning the fact that nobody writes letters anymore. Right, right. Uh, which I'm not going to do a jet service envelope ad now. All right, uh, we're going to... Uh, well, actually, I am. Yeah, you good timing. Hey, well, uh, right. You know, if you're looking for some nice letterhead, some envelopes in your family, because, yes, maybe sending a personal letter now and then. I was talking about the value of actually writing out something and how meaningful it is to that person on the other end if you ever want to thank them for a gift. Helps the gifts keep coming in the future, too. Call our friends at Chet Service Envelope. Jeff Blue working on a project right now uh, for me, which I appreciate. And uh, it does an awesome job. He will for you, too. And, and, in fact, the experience I'm having right now is the one that you can have. All you have to do is email things to Jeff. Uh, you know, I love going over and visiting them. But they make it so easy for you that you don't even need to physically see them. You can just PDF a file over there, Word attachment file. And then they just magically make it happen. They also do deliveries, too. So call them today if you have any 
questions at 229-9335, and you'll find them on the web at jetservice-envelope.com. Let's head over to Montpelier. Ken, good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, I, I did have a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, uh, I uh, have to embarrass Dan a little bit because I was the director uh, of the Mental Health Association when Dan was a student at Twinfield High School. And I remember that when he first showed up at Camp Daybreak, he was a little overwhelmed, to put it mildly, by uh, what he had volunteered for. So it's are you, are you going to say it, though, Ken? Uh, Dan uh, was quivering <laughs> at certain is. points, uh, as we had the orientation that starts the program for new, staff, new and old staff. Uh, I think it's important to point out that a number of Dan's predecessors worked their way up uh, over the last 30 years, uh, starting as big brothers and big sisters. So you could say in the best of sense that uh, Camp Daybreak is also a career on-the-job training program for the my high school students. I think that's a fantastic story. Uh, besides all the good work that I think Daybreak does, um, I, I think we also have to recognize that it's probably in its own way a wonderful example of an early intervention and even prevention program in children's mental health. And although we give a lot of lip service to wanting to encourage those kinds of services in all of healthcare, it's often very hard to support them, fund them, and really appreciate them. So I think as you consider all the things that Camp Daybreak contributes, it should be seen as an early intervention program, a great investment, helps kids who predictably may have some challenges and problems better cope with their teen years and adult years. Mm -hmm. So uh, my hat's off to, uh, to Dan and Floyd for uh, uh, promoting uh, what's a, what we would call the Vermont Institution. That's what the program is. Thanks for your call, Ken. I appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Ken. Anything you want to comment on your quivering or anything, okay. like anything else? Well, um, uh, Ken's line was always, uh, when I started at Camp Daybreak, I was a quivering leaf. Um, he didn't have the leaf part today, but that was always his line. Um, well, there, is, that's, there is, that's true enough. There is archery, <laughs> archery there, so, you know, quivers for, <laughs> right, for probably, quivers. That's probably um, what he was referring to. Right. But Ken makes a really good point. You know, a lot of... Um, a lot of the work that we do with kids is about um, uh, building self-esteem and, and early on in life uh, creating a system where they know that um, they are not just their bad behaviors or challenges. They are they are people uh, and they are human. And, um, you know, it's true. A lot of a lot of the people who come and volunteer at Camp Daybreak as well. Uh, end up going into fields uh, that help people later in life. I mentioned my story. You know, uh, my wife is a special educator at uh, Milton Elementary, um, but all of my predecessors have have also done work in mental health. Um, John Rowell is um, I don't know what his title is exactly, but he works at Georgia Elementary School uh, in the special ed department there. Uh, Carolyn Ricker, who was my uh, the director before me, uh, she also did uh, work in mental health in New York State. Um, you know, we uh, people who come to camp uh, really become motivated by helping kids and helping people. And uh, I was asked the other day to talk about how uh, what was the wording? It was uh, how do you how does Camp Daybreak build um, uh, career skills? And although we don't really have a focus in building career skills per se, it happens organically. Um, uh, the way I chose to approach the, qu approach the question was. It's more about building your humanity um, and that when you walk away from the experience, you're not necessarily saying to yourself, oh, I want to, you know, I want to go into mental health or, mm -hmm. I, you know, I want to work with kids. It's more about I want to help people. I want to be available to help people in their lives who need that extra help. And I want to do that. And, and people who come to camp often do that later in life or, uh, or change their goals to make room for that. Can't think of many jobs where that skill doesn't have some applicability. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and continue our discussion. We've been talking with Dan Osmond, also Floyd Neese. We've been talking about Camp Daybreak. We'll uh, be back in just a moment.